with authority. Welcome to another quarantine edition of our With Authority podcast. Larry Beal, Casey Pratt, and our special guest joining us from his posh, undisclosed location with wood paneling behind him. <laughs> it's Bob Myers, the Warriors general manager and president of basketball operations, three-time NBA champion as an executive, uh, two-time NBA executive of the year, and perhaps the most impressive fact in his bio, Monta Vista High School Hall of Famer, go Stangs. <laughs> yes. Nobody ever highlights that except for you, so I appreciate it. I, well, I my, <laughs> my girls went to Monta Vista and Casey went to San Ramon Valley, the hated rivals, so I don't even know why he's on this podcast. I yeah. actually broke out two San Ramon Valley High yearbooks just to flaunt them in Bob Meyer's face. Can we uh, black out Casey's, they, you know, you can, on the screen, just I, make I, a little hit profile or something, a little blob. A little Warriors yeah. logo or something. I don't want yeah. to talk about how they stole the the, the the last game you played at Monta Vista from you. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you for that, too, because that, <laughs> that, that hasn't gotten enough coverage. All right. It's thievery. It's, I mean, last second, who knows, the, the ref got paid off, another inbounds yeah, play, yeah, it's just, the, it's, that's the way they roll at SRV, <laughs> we know that. Anyway, we're being already, it, it, yeah. you and I, we've probably been doing interviews, so I think you're coming up on 10 years with the Warriors, which is mind-boggling in, in and of itself, I think you're at nine years right now, mm -hmm. and we've done so many interviews, and invariably it goes off the rails somewhere, virtually every time, and I, this only happens with you pretty much. So yeah. I don't know, I, I don't really claim much responsibility. So I want us to have a safe word uh, in case we, if we sense oh, it. Oh yeah. Case, yeah, like if you feel it's going in a bad direction uh, and our safe word I think is appropriate, it's going to be bubble. Right, Like right. the NBA bubble, like we don't want to burst right. the bubble. The NBA bubble is right. so far zero positives. We're very good in the bubble. Yep. Yeah. So, if you, in case we get to dangerous territory, just yell "bubble, bubble, bubble." <laughs> um, okay. uh, uh, here are the things. Bubble, bubble. That, I haven't started yet. <laughs> Come on! I was practicing. I was just practicing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how Steve Kerr puts up with this. Um, here's what I'm not going to ask you because I was given a long list by your PR man, uh, Raymond Ritter, extraordinary, who's monitoring secretly on on the Zoom yes. call. Uh, I'm not going to ask you how good the wings are at Magic City Gentlemen's Club in Atlanta. I'm going to steer away from that. Yeah. Uh, bubble. You've been, you been there? <laughs> bubble. <laughs> bubble. Bubble. <laughs> no. No, I have not. I've not been there for for any reason, okay. wings or otherwise. So I okay. don't know. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you how long you would personally survive in the NBA bubble because okay. I don't think it'd be long. And I'm not going to ask you how many times per day you text Giannis's burner phone. Not going to ask that. Not going to get into that at all. Nothing. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Bubble. Casey, feel free to ask something. You can, you can jump in anytime. Hey, no, no serious now. We, last time we interviewed you was at the Chase Center for the, the grand opening of the Chase Center. Remember, we were up in the suites there. And I don't know how it feels like for you or for Casey. To me, that feels like 100 years ago. Yeah. Lifetime ago. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was seems like, yeah. What was it? Was that, was that about a year? Was it less? About ten months ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what it was? Yeah. But that feels like a different world. I mean, it, it does. feels uh, a lot of things do, but that that's a good barometer from when we last spoke to how long ago that feels. It feels like a long time ago. It's crazy. Case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to say sincerely, thank you so much for coming on because Larry told me that I wasn't allowed to shave my beard until we booked you, and it took. That long to get you. You're, you're yeah. tough to get. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you guys a question on facial hair and grooming. Have you guys, <laughs> have Bubble. you guys figured, out, <laughs> have you gotten your hair? I mean, I live in San Francisco, so I have not, I've not done, some people have had someone come to their house. What do you guys, what's your strategy there? Is it the spouse or someone else or? I, I could start. I actually had my wife cut my hair. Uh, she has never done anything like that. Uh, we probably had, three or four too many drinks before trying it. And she actually did an amazing job. I was terrified, but she did great. So you guys uh, look good. You both look like you got it right. Thank I don't you. know what Larry. Yeah, it looks good. 
Um, I actually don't trust my wife with sharp objects around the neck area. Hang on one sec, guys. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about here. Kayla, can't shut the door. No, no, shut the door. Shut the door, please. How old See? is Kayla? How old is she's Kayla? Ten. She's 10. So she's, she's 10. in charge of the other two kids. I hope so, but I mean, you just saw, I just said I'm on a podcast. What, what do we call this? Zoomcast? <laughs> That's a and, and podcast. No, you asked yes. me at the start whether I run my household, and I said no. So that, that's proof right there. Yeah. But your that's hair it looks good. I mean, we're now. <laughs> I'll now tell you what I do. I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. I'll tell you what I do. So you get those clippers, right? You get seen those clip, grooming clippers? Yeah. This is not an exaggeration. So there's a, um, an eight, that, like a, it says eight on it. So it's kind of the longest pronged clippers, right? They're, they're right. not the short ones. So I just take that and I, I just go across my whole head. And then to get the loose hairs out, I take the, you know, the lawn blower things, the leaf blowers, I put <laughs> that right here and I, I turn it off and just blow all the, that's my, that's what I, when I get a haircut, they're going to say, where were you doing, man? What were you doing? But you that's look, what they're going to do. I mean, you're extraordinarily handsome. I think most of us would agree that that's the case. And yeah, I so appreciate it, that. it doesn't really matter. You just gel it up a little and, you know, I mean, yeah. you're in the middle of, Nowhere. Yeah. Yet. Who's yeah. who's in the yeah. background now? That's the same one. It's the same one. Kayla. Same one. Yeah, well, I know. You want, Kayla, does Kayla want to be on the on the? Kayla, you want to come over here and apologize for your, what you're doing? No, she no, she's quiet. <laughs> down by the down by the. Um, yeah. No, sorry. Yeah, thank you for the compliment, Larry. No, I yeah, appreciate I, it. I've always felt I, I've always envied you because you're tall and handsome and wealthy and all this stuff and oh, a no. the hall of famer and so oh, yeah it's just yeah. it really it to echo what casey said it, it is an honor to have you on because you're not even aware of this but a couple of months ago we were trying to have you on and uh, we, we made the request and i'm sure it never got to you uh we ended up getting steve kerr um, mm -hmm. better guest anyway yeah, better. But, yeah. so that worked oh, out in, in our favor <laughs> but i was told Bob is really busy. He's so busy. He's very busy. And I was like, yeah. Huh? We, yeah. The, like the, the draft is the, like months and we don't even know. That was back when we didn't even have a date. And I thought now, I mean, since March, this dude has been on a four and a half month vacation. Yeah, who told <laughs> you that? Was that Ritter? Was that Ritter? Yes. Who said, oh, yeah, well, you know. What well, have you been doing? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Negotiating with my 10 and 8-year-old and 2-year-old. And, uh, you know, I'll say this. It's actually interesting. I don't know how you guys, your lives obviously changed. You fill your time. It's not like everybody's on vacation. And it's been a good, good process for even Steve and myself to kind of slow down and revisit strategy and process and staffing and everything like that. And that's something you usually don't get afforded. The, the time to do so you fill it up but as far as traditional time spent no it's completely different than that the time the calendar for us is very powerful and the calendar has shifted completely here to what it is now which is august 20th we find out our pick and then october obviously is the draft and free agency so it's a totally different different calendar to try to calibrate yeah yeah i mean it's Almost like you can take something terrible like this global pandemic, try in some way to turn it into a positive because, you know, five straight NBA finals, you guys are usually coming out of the finals, going right into the draft. I'm sure that's insane. So, I mean, now you have time to over prepare and, and just excess time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how much can you make that a benefit for you guys? You know, you hope you can, KC. That's the goal, to take advantage of it. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a different situation because things are shifting between our feet as far as – uh, the calendar, like I said, and, and uh, what we'll be able to do in the draft process, what we'll be able to do uh, when next season begins, all those things as far as getting our players back back in condition and things like that. So it's, it's more of a kind of mental thing uh, for us as far as are we doing things the right way, when things restart, assuming they look as normal as possible, should we do anything different? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? And so we hope we can get those things right. And Steve's a great partner because Steve – but one thing that makes Steve so good is his, his continuous curiosity, his humility. He doesn't, port, he doesn't portend to think he's got it all figured out. And that makes for good conversation as far as what do you think of how we did this? Do, would you do this differently? And those are the ones where you get the, most, uh, the best answers out of, I would say.
you know, time is undefeated and you think about it as in wear and tear and, and guys like Steph didn't have that many miles on the legs this year. Clay rehabbing all year in, in Draymond, even these guys are now getting a long break before they come back. So how big of a factor do you think that's going to be for you guys heading into next season? I think if anybody needed it, it would be us, you know, selfishly, as far as any team in the league, we were the, probably the most fatigued mentally and physically. So I think we would benefit more than anybody else if, if you find benefit in it. Uh, there's a point of where you, where you have too much rest. And you want to avoid that. But, yeah, certainly for guys that had a lot of mileage and continuous mileage for, for five finals in a row, the respite was welcome. But I imagine at this point they're probably a little bit chomping at the bit because not having played basketball in such a long time. So it's – like I said, we benefit maybe more than others by the break. But uh, I'm sure guys are – you know, they're still young. You know, they, they can recover, and I'm sure they want to get back at it whenever they can. Yeah, because you'll be looking at something like a nine-month gap between your last game and when you start up again. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the training camp date would be, but the season is supposed to start in December. So uh, kind of a, a unique position for you guys when you look at five straight title runs, three championships, and then uh, KD decides to, to go back east and – Clay gets hurt, and then a few games into the season, Steph gets hurt. I, I have to believe there are times where you've walked into Steve's office pre-pandemic and just said, whoa, <laughs> like, what, what just happened here? It's like this yeah. huge rush, and then everything's like come to a standstill. Yeah, I mean, a big, big pivot, right? A big shift in what we were used to and what we had experienced, even, in, even the people we were interacting with. and So many new faces on the roster. Um, so many new experiences. For, and then we did the trade, and that's another new change. And so, so many different things. Injuries with Draymond had some things. Obviously, Steph's was well documented. Guys coming and going. Looney, unfortunately, having what he had and missing most of the season. And and then trading some of the guys we had that had done a good job for us. It was it was a lot of change. And for a team that was used to a lot of continuity. It was a big difference. And we, we, what we tried to do and what Steve and I talked about was maintaining our culture, main, maintaining our foundation, and really holding on to those things. And I think we actually did a pretty good job of that. And losing usually really attacks those, those metrics within your organization. They really challenge. Losing challenges all that you've built. And I think through a lot of losing, 15 and 50, we were able to maintain that and um, feel as good as you can about a, a, such a poor record and feel pretty excited about next season. So if you look at what you've got coming up, um, Clay presumably will be healthy. Steph will be at full speed. Uh, Draymond as well. You're going to have a top five lottery pick. We can talk a little bit more about that. But looking at all those things, former warrior David West recently said he would not be surprised once you get the troops back assembled uh, for next year that you, quote, bum rush the league <laughs> and I'm wondering if you are planning on having like bum rush t-shirts perhaps printed up 2021 yeah. bum rush yeah. The league yeah can no? you are you making though are you are you gonna start distributing those is, is that in production I don't think I'd wear it <laughs> you don't I never uh, I never actually thought we bum rush but I like David so I appreciate his court here I like you I know like I I actually oh. was one of the first to buy a warriors mask Oh yeah uh, you know yeah. Uh, um yeah. and I, and even before that I suggested to Raymond that you guys produce them and he didn't respond to me um yeah. and so but I bought with my own well it wasn't my own money actually but uh I bought <laughs> Where, where are you going with this? Where, where? No, I, I don't know. I, don't I never know. know either. Don't bubble, worry. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Uh, <laughs> Stacey, ask your question. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, All right. We'll take it a different direction. Then. So yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was actually learning. Um, we're about 25 years. The anniversary just passed from your national championship at UCLA. And I stumbled upon this quote. And it said, <laughs> We refer to Bob as our Forrest Gump, and we say that in a complimentary way. He's had this kind of Forrest Gump kind of destiny. Hey, the box of chocolates every day, it's a new adventure for Bob Myers. Is that a real nickname you had at UCLA, Forrest Gump? No, nobody called me that. Our, our assistant coach, or what, what was head coach by the time I left, Steve Lavin. Yeah, that was his quote. Yeah, Bay Area guy. So he, it never stuck. I didn't, 
I don't, I, if it had stuck, that'd be interesting, but it was more his thing. And uh, I think maybe he tried to get it off the ground and nobody, nobody really went for it. But I think what he was trying to say would be that you know, I wasn't supposed to be on UCLA's basketball team. I, I probably wasn't supposed to make the team. I wasn't, wasn't supposed to be on a championship team. And so that's the correlation kind of, you know, meeting the president and we were in a parade at Disney, all these things. I mean, some of these guys, probably thought that would be their future but for me I never envisioned that and so it was one of those things where I never thought it possible and uh, that's where I think he got it that's where I think it came from yeah I see walk on at UCLA national championship winner appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated went to the White House appeared on the Tonight Show NBA executive of the year twice three-time NBA champ I mean that is like a Forrest Gump type run that's that's really impressive yeah when you put it that way uh, when you put it that way, although the, the Sports Illustrated cover was was my forearms um, and my face was hidden appropriately so. I was holding up Ty <laughs> Edney. And uh, so when you say I was on the cover, I don't know if the limbs of your – it doesn't really – I wouldn't count it as that. I wouldn't I – wouldn't count. Larry probably would. You'd probably say you were on the cover. I'm right? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other accomplishments. I have to hang on to something. Uh, but I'm really glad Casey brought this up because uh, this is not some bum rush podcast that you're on. I actually spent about 45 minutes on the phone today with Steve Lavin oh. to find out about what really happened and that what you just said is not true. It's not <laughs> true. So, so now – Bob, you want to yell bubble yet, or you want? No, I'm ready for. I'm, I think I can take this one. I'm okay. bracing for this. I'm bracing. Okay, because we do our research here. Okay, I'm waiting. All right. <laughs> so, what he told me was, uh, because of your high school coach at Monta Vista had a connection with, with Coach Lav, you came in with your father, and you were not planning on playing basketball at UCLA. And uh, we're just kind of wandering around the campus trying to get ready for what student life would be uh, because you were serious about your academics. And he was trying, because he heard these stories about you, um, was trying to pitch you on joining the squad as a walk-on. And he thought that he'd made a, a nice presentation to you and your dad in the office and all of that. And then he said he was almost crestfallen as you left because you said, Hey, um, thanks so much. Um, I'm wondering, do you know um, where the crew coach is? <laughs> because I really want to row to stay in shape during college. And, and Lab was like, I, he had no idea who the rowing coach was. <laughs> and so he could not guide you to what you were really looking for. And just think about this. If he knew where the, the rowing coach was, or even who he was, and you went there, we would not have you on this podcast right now, most likely. No, no, 100%. I mean, I thought I tried to say it more generally. You said it more specifically, but not, not supposed to be here or there at UCLA. That's part of the more interesting story, I would say, to the people watching or listening. It's, yeah, I mean, that was a pivotal moment where, I don't know if you guys have these, but had I not run into him, specifically that person, because he also had a picture of John Wooden in his cubicle. And he was the third assistant at the time. So he just had a cubicle. He didn't have a closed door office. Mm -hmm. And he had a picture of John Wooden because Lab had been a grad assistant under Gene Cady at Purdue. And Wooden obviously went to Purdue. My dad went to Purdue. And my dad said, hey, you know, I, that, you know let's see the Wooden picture. I went to Purdue. I grew up in Indiana. And so that began the conversation. And I did say, listen, where's the crew coach? But I do remember Lab, that's a, his belief in me was more than my own. And had we not met him, um, because I, I applied and got into a lot of schools and wanted to play basketball, that by far was the best school, best basketball school I got into. And yet when I said I want to go to UCLA, in, inside myself I said, well, there goes basketball. Because if you wanted to play basketball, this is not, you're not making this team. You should have went to the, some of the other schools you got into. And so that's where his kind of saying, why don't you walk on? Had he not done that? Yeah, I probably don't meet, make the team, meet Herrick, Herrick and just meet Arn and tell him. Then I meet Danny, I meet all these people and then finally end up meeting Joe. 
I don't know if, if people have those things in their life where it's kind of like, but for this one time, would Larry, you know, would you have been here or Casey there? So I'm not saying he's right. No, he, he tells a better story, but that is, that's kind of what happened. So I'm glad you brought it to light. What would you, what would you be doing? Would you you'd probably be a, a you, you have a law degree, right? So you probably would yeah. be like a practicing attorney somewhere. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't, Arn kind of encouraged me to go to law school at night while I was working for him with, at the sports agency. Um, I was a busy con major at UCLA, which is a lot of accounting. So maybe, maybe something in finance. I don't, not this, right? Not this. Maybe it would have been a, 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 a great rower, you know, big, big, strong muscles. Olympic, <laughs> Olympic champion <laughs> rower. Maybe you, would, you could have yeah. been on the podcast as rowing champion, Bob yep, Myers. Yep, yep, right. Yeah. Have you had one of those guys on yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting. Uh, it's only because we don't know any of them. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> or do they even exist? I don't know. Uh, We're going to look into that. Oh, man. Um, Casey, what do you got? Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned Arn twice, Arn Tellum. Um, and I just wanted to know, like, you know, your background as an agent. How did that kind of give you an inside or different perspective than what you were going to take to the Warriors when you became general manager? Because everything's gone really well so far. Well, he had great relationships. Uh, he, he's a great negotiator. So those two things jump out immediately. His, his network within the league, he had a lot of great clients. He had Kobe Bryant early, McGrady, um, a lot of high profile guys. Reggie Miller was one of his first clients. So to kind of be in that office, exposed me to general managers, shoe companies, uh, himself, and watched him kind of navigate the NBA from a position of power. And so I learned the power of these relationships, the power of negotiating, the power the players had, the power the agents had. And so one thing I might have took from me when I left there and, and came over to the Warriors side was how important agents are. I mean, you see how important they are in every sport. And I think that was, it's more, more known now than it was 10 years ago, because now I think even in the media and the fans realize that agents can kind of move pieces around or they may be the one behind demanding a trade or not. So there's such a fragility in our business. I learned about what might be going on on the other side and how players view things and agents and having a sense of how the other side operates because I actually did it was helpful. And I think it, especially in our sport in basketball, General managers always think the agents got it easier and the agents always think the general managers have it easier. And having done both, I would say they're both equally challenging in different ways. And um, also knowing a lot of the agents too, just kind of being in that agent fraternity um, was helpful for me. Uh, it gave me a little bit of a leg up. And, and then they, obviously some other organizations started following that model. And uh, the Knicks just hired a guy, Leon Rose, who was in that industry. The Lakers hired Rob Palenka. So, I guess that's um, it's kind of a trend a little bit. You talked about moving parts around, and, and obviously there's so much going on right now in the NBA. I sat on my couch and watched two basketball games yesterday. I got a game on right now. And, I mean, how bittersweet is it for you to kind of watch that, what's going on in there, or how happy are you that you're not in there at this moment in time? I mean, what is it like, and what are your impressions so far of really what they've been able to pull off? It's pretty miraculous. Yeah, Casey, it's, I think what Adam Silver and that leadership has done is – Look, there's no perfect solutions right now for anybody. You, me, I mean, Larry, I mean, I guess the perfect solution is never leave your house, right? I mean, but that's not realistic. So for a sport in an industry that's trying to play, I think you've done it as safely as you can. And just watching it, I don't know how you guys felt. I, this could be my own personal bias, but it, of all the sports, it looked the safe. It felt the safest. I don't know why. Maybe I know too much or I'm aware of all the testing going on. And so to watch it, as a general manager that's not participating, you do feel like you're not part of the party. You know, you do feel like you weren't invited. Although I can't argue why we weren't. We, we were the last people that should have been. So you feel a sense of missing out. But then you also, the idea of being away from my family for, for that long, if it had been any of the previous five years, you're talking about three months. And so I have a great appreciation for the kind of partners in, in my position that are there and then are doing it and, 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 and being away from their family for their profession, for the NBA and for their team. So kind of mixed, to be honest, I can't say I'm so glad I'm not there. And um, I, I, I can't, I can't say that I 
glad I, you know, if I was there. So it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to tell. I just think that we're so fortunate because at this point I would put Adam Silver in charge of all sports, every <laughs> league, just, I think yeah. he's light years Oh wait, Maybe I shouldn't use that phrase, but no, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Joe's fine with it. <laughs> bubble. I, bubble, 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 bubble. Uh, he's way ahead. <laughs> Big mother. Uh, I don't plan that. I, just, just I don't think I can out. ever hear light years again and not think I know. that. I, know. I, I don't think I can, which is fine. It's great. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, I just think he's. But Adam, yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, he's I mean, just way I'll ahead. I'll tell you what, I think what makes Adam unique, he's, he has great power, as any commissioner does. And so what, what happens to a lot of people in power is they're, they, they lose the ability to listen because they're so powerful and they, they can move whatever direction they want to move in. But I think one of my favorite qualities of him is his listening and collaborative. He'll, he'll talk to you and listen to you and genuinely listen. It won't be, you'll feel like he's listening when you suggest something. Um, and I think that's to my benefit, our benefit, the league's benefit, even you mentioning from afar, this guy looks like he's got the, it handled the best way you can handle this, you know, or anything. Cause these are difficult things. I mean, this yeah. is not, you don't sign up for a commissioner and say, well, um, page 75C says in a pandemic, this is what you do. Nobody's got that. You know, so it's tough. Yeah, he does listen, actually. I have a great story uh, about getting into an argument with Commissioner Silver at the ESPYs on the red carpet. It was pretty funny, actually, uh, because it was right after you guys signed uh, Kevin Durant and all the other owners were just furious, and we were doing the interview. It was like, it was the day after, I think, with the ESPYs, and he was like, yes, as uh, ownership around the league is going to address this, we can't just allow this to continue, and mm -hmm. I was like, wait, 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 wait a second. The Warriors' salary cap is lower with Kevin Durant. He took mm -hmm. less money. Those are good mm -hmm. things for the league, um, and obviously, we know the rest is history, but he changed his view. I mean, at one point they were looking at, we've got to put some rules in place mm -hmm. to stop this kind of thing. Right. And then, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, he changed uh, positions yeah. and uh, uh, so on and so forth. I want to touch on uh, the draft lottery because you guys haven't been in the lottery in, in quite a while, but it's, it's August the 20th. You are guaranteed to get a top five pick. Now, when we had Steve Kerr on a couple of months ago, I was, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we have a, a thing called the ABC seven coaching staff and we try to help. That's mm. what we're here for. Yeah. So very unaware of that. <laughs> <Highly> unaware. <laughs> so if, if you know, uh, and, and coach Keating is, is a part of that and you're drawing up sets and trying to get guys in the right spots to thrive. Um, I mean, it seems like you guys are doing okay. Um, but uh, we, we try to, we try to help. So, I wanted to try to help with the draft yeah. and uh, Steve kind of blew me off and said, that's not my area. You need to talk to Bob about that. And so now you're on, now we can talk. Um, yeah. So I just want to simplify it. Okay. Can we, can we make it? Yeah. Just take, just take Obi Toppin. We, we, and that's we it. We can just end the conversation, right? We can just move on to the next question. Well, you no, want I want to, wanna get, no, I <laughs> <laughs> bubble. Bubble. <laughs> oh, I've, I've kind of fallen in love with Obi Toppin. Sure. Uh, in, yeah. a, in a curious way, but 6'9, 225, uh, dunks on everybody. In game, does between the leg dunks, yeah. which is absurd, and can shoot threes. And for a team that needs kind of a stretch for, you could argue, would be an ideal. Th I don't even care about the other dudes in the draft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, should I, I mean, are you asking me to value your opinion? <laughs> what do you want me to do with, what do you want me to, I mean, Casey, what do I do with that? Larry's, is that duly uh, The noted? best course of action is to ignore him <laughs> at all times. What, what, uh, what is your, uh, uh, how about this? What do you, what, what, yeah, well, I would like you to say, it would be great for us <laughs> as a podcast if you just said, yes, we are going to take OB you Toppin. Take OB, yeah, yeah, okay. It, because right. then we could, yeah. what would happen yeah. is then the aggregators would take that clip and disseminate yep. it, and then it would be yes. on Sports Center and all that'd these That would be things. awesome. So and I'll just podcast would blow up. Exactly. Everybody. 
Could you help us? I'll just stop talking and you just say that long. I only need like five seconds. No, I thought I thought I did that with a description of my haircut. That I thought was the thing that would aggregate and get shot out. Oh. But I did that. That you don't. You guys don't think that that's interesting that's, enough. That wasn't. I don't think that's going to make Sports <laughs> Center tonight. Since you're clearly dodging this. No, you want me? To, oh yeah. I mean, are you allowed? Well, I don't even know the rules. Are you allowed I don't, I don't to discuss? Even, I, yeah, I think we probably can. Um, I don't know. Look, I'd say this. We don't even know what pick we have, so there's that. Right. Second, secondly, just like when you would hire someone or commit a lot of money to them, which is what we'll be doing with the top five pick, I just would like more information. I'd let, you know, we saw some stuff, which everybody saw, you saw, but we were unable to, at this point, see anybody in person like right. we normally would. And so... Hopefully that's a possibility. I don't know. Interview somebody in person. Uh, those are things that matter in some respects and move the needle one way or the other. Because really, the hardest thing in all this is finding out who someone is. Because that matters, right? I mean, there's, there's their performance on the, on the court. But even though we all love Steph Curry at Davidson, I'm not sure we all knew how unique of a human being he was. Right. Uh, even though we thought we liked what he did and he makes threes and he's, he's very magnetic and we all wanted to watch him. I don't think anybody knew who he was. And so when we draft somebody, we really got to figure, try to figure that out. And I, we haven't had the chance to do that yet with, with or him or any guy yet. So it's hard to say. How much more challenging does it make the process this year? Because I, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few months, but at the moment, I, I guess the most that you can do is like a Zoom call with, with a guy. and that, That's it, right? I mean, what else Yeah, right now, that's, that's kind of the, like what we're doing right now with you. You know, Steve and I have done a few of those. And so, yeah, it's not the same, right? I mean, it's not the same. We did a pod, we did something like this in person and it's easier, right? It's just, you're there and it's, yeah. it's, it's more seamless. Uh, so this is the next best thing. We all are doing it right now. And any, every line of work you guys are doing it, I'm doing it. But we're also not committing. It's, it's a huge, to have a top five pick, you really want to be as comfortable as you can. And being comfortable means you, you get to know the person a little bit more than we've been able to. So, yeah, if, if, we're, if that's not allowed, it's, it's going to be tougher for us and any team to the kind of really get it right. It's going to be more yeah. of a crapshoot this year. Because yeah, it's be tougher. Not, not. So be tougher. is it safe to say, as we tape this, you do not know who you're going to take? Or do you know who you're going to take? No, I would say we don't know. Okay. I really would say that, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, maybe that's that'll, not, does that aggregate, is that do anything for? That's not going to move the needle at all. <laughs> Headline, <laughs> Warriors don't know who what? they're going to take. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Bob Larry, Myers, gonna... no I'm idea sorry. what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I mean, I'm going to have to put propping up your podcast back onto you guys. I'm sorry, I can't. And maybe Kerr, rerun Kerr's podcast and maybe that'll generate some attention. Right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we are live right now, and, and we're international. We have a, a fan named Thomas Walter from Germany in here. we got a bunch of people. I'm monitoring the chat. But, wow. you know, one of the prevailing comments in here is, is how is Clay Thompson doing? Are you able, I mean, to talk to him? I know in the offseason he, he ends up going all over the place. We've seen videos of him looking pretty good. Uh, what do you know, and what have you been able to communicate with him this offseason? Just that things are going what, fine, Casey. I, but, again, it's hard because – this would be a time where you'd be monitoring contact and watching him play three on three or two on two and five on five. And we, we're not allowed to do that. Uh, none of the teams that are not in Orlando are allowed to do that. So it's uh, it's tough to say completely because with an injury like that, you really want to have some contact type of scrimmaging or practicing underneath you, but all indications are he's, he's doing fine and no, no red flags, no issues that have come up during the rehab. But, a mo it's, it, you know, it's not something you'd, you'd prefer to monitor it more closely than from a distance, but it's just tough to do at this point. Now, you talked about just kind of getting to know guys and knowing that they're the quality individuals you are. And you have a whole roster full of those kind of high character guys. How proud have you been of these guys in this kind of racial injustice environment where you saw them, you know, going down Lake Mary, Juan Toscano, Anderson, Steph Curry was there, Kevon Looney was there, Clay showed up. I mean just to be able to take the stand these guys are doing and in, in doing it in such a meaningful and, and powerful and respectable way. I mean, what do you think when you see that from those guys? Yeah. I mean, those are just, that's the human side of this that people sometimes don't see. And 
appreciate you mentioning it, but you know, I spoke to Juan after that and it, and it's such a nice kid and such a thoughtful and well-intentioned. And, and he, he was so kind of brutally honest in that I'm just kind of move going with the movement. Like he, he was almost like, this is, I'm just doing what feels right. And it feels authentic. And I don't really know. I didn't sign up for this, so to speak. I mean, I don't think he envisioned himself being put in that leadership role, but he was embracing it and trying to figure out how to do it. And, a really, a really humility. I mean, and I, I find that my most favorite leaders are the humble leaders that are kind of like they're thrust into a leadership position, almost even resisting it kind of saying, but you know what, this is where I've been put and now I'm going to try and lead. And that's, that's where you get proud of Juan and then to see our teammates support him with Steph and Clay and a few other guys that showed up. Um, I mean, that's the stuff it doesn't, yeah, I know that did get a lot of traction in headlines, but those are the things that you really, makes going to work each day and interacting with those type of people enjoyable. Well, uh, I think we're in a new era of player empowerment and we're seeing how that plays out. And uh, it's interesting just to see what the reaction will be. And uh, the bond that I think that's been created throughout the league uh, with this movement. And it, to me, it feels like there is a seismic shift that is taking place. Do you feel that? Yeah, I look societally too. I think that, I mean, I've, I've, I've talked to people um, in the black community and, and I've even, it's amazing how much we all have to learn. I have to learn and, and that players can be spokesmen, peaceful spokesmen to, to change. And I think we all would agree that change is needed and necessary. And so it's, it's, it's been done thoughtfully. I mean, you saw what guys did last night. It's been done peacefully. And I think that's, that's what makes America great, right? We all get to do those things. Yeah. And, and I think that's where you do, we, where I'm proud of our players, proud of the NBA community. And, and you referenced Adam Silver, Larry. That's, yeah. And look, you risk, you risk when you speak on issues like this, you risk discord um, and you risk opposition but not speaking on them um, you're just asking for more of the same. And I think we would all probably say the same isn't very good. And so that's what I think people are rightly pushing back against societally. And the, also the understanding that it's, it's everybody, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's all of society that needs to help. It's, it's not just the minorities uh, of society. It's all of us. And so their leadership has been really phenomenal yeah we're gonna wrap it up i, I want to leave it on a, on a lighter note and i'm wondering I, this is i have on my phone you're actually in my phone and this is my favorite picture of you so i'm oh, gonna boy. try to put this up here and I, i'm wondering if you can describe the moment and what was going on during this and i'll, I'll see if we can if you can see this <laughs> um, that's do you know what wow. the situation was um that I mean, the we should run a caption contest. Is that you know who's hair? You know who's uh, <laughs> it might be looking like I'm talking to Jerry West there. Or were, might, you, were you in constant astonishment whenever Jerry was, was that, around or just to get yeah, another, probably <laughs> I should be. No, I don't, I can't see what I'm talking to there, but uh, that is um, is that is that I don't you? know when that is. I, I walk around like that all the time. <laughs> that could be that could have been from yesterday. <laughs> I don't know, man. Is that when your kid, is that when the kids are out of control? Is that the, the is that the, your look? I look like look? I was happy. I look like I was happy, not frustrated. I looked like I was uh, joyful. The okay. kids are going out of control. I just you saw you already got a glimpse into that. You got since nice since you gave us nothing to aggregate, that's the photo yeah. that we're going to post. And we're going to Bob. I'm, <laughs> this was Bob Myers shocked at the interview questions. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just make up the headline: Myers appalled at Beal and Pratt questioning, <laughs> disgusted. Uh, no, you guys are great. This is, uh, it's always fun. Sorry that I couldn't come on earlier. You're very sorry busy. Raymond. So yeah, busy. Sorry, sorry that Raymond lied to you. I get to shave my beard now, this is good. You yeah. do, nice. I, I like can't, that. I actually, you're one of my favorite people to talk with and we always have such a blast. And uh, I hope, you know, well, I hope the league gets through the finals and everybody stays healthy. 
And I don't know how we would do it because of all the rules and regulations, but I hope you'll be available to come on one of our final shows because we're going to have fun. finals on ABC, assuming we get to the finals. Do, do, do you think you guys do uh, in studio? Because I saw TNT last night had the plexiglass. I mean, I don't even know. Is that Have you yeah. done stuff in studio? Are you doing stuff yeah. now? Or, we, okay. um, we, we do some. We're actually going to do a show on Sunday, a post-game right. show uh, with, with me and Kerry Keating and... Uh, um, uh, Donald Foyle, and we'll be separated, but sure. we'll all be in studio. So uh, we yeah. could, we could, or you could zoom in, or you know, well, sure. that too, yeah. whatever. But we'd Great. love to have you and It'd bring the whole, yeah. whole family. <laughs> yeah, bring. Have, get, let's get get Kayla and uh, yeah. all my daughters. All, yeah. the, all my daughters. Let's Your let dad, girl. Your dad is yeah. great. Yeah, you. All of us are right. You, yes. You, and yes. Casey too, right. Yeah. How many daughters between? I got three. You got you have how many? Two. 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 We each got, have two. There we go. Seven. Seven Your daughters. Squad. On this, We've there got a go. squad. We get, I like we get, it. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> anyway. All right. Enjoy your extended vacation time that you clearly are on. And sure. uh and we'll talk to you soon, hopefully in person. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Larry. Right. Thanks, Casey. Appreciate All right. it. Monavis the right. Hall of Famer, Bob Myers. Thank you. Aloha. Appreciate that, Larry. <laughs> with authority.